a lot of what we're talking about here, anything with a central bank at its core, okay. central bank is anti-capitalist, right? This idea of arbitrary inflation, this idea of yield, uh, yield curve control. Okay. Uh, all of these price controls in general, these yes. are not capitalist Pure, notions yeah, whatsoever, see, sure. right? This right. is central planning, right. central trumping planning. free market uh -huh. um, price discovery. Also related to this is just the business cycle itself, right? To your point earlier, it's it's gotten worse. The liquidity collapses are happening faster. They're more severe. Also, the subsequent bailout packages, they grow out, what was it, $700 billion in 2008? That's what, what was, it was. What was it yeah. in 2020 worldwide? It's a couple of trillion. A few trillion, yeah, right? Yeah. So they're, they're exponentially growing with each crisis. Correct. Is, I mean, I... <laughs> I'm kind of a radical libertarian, I guess, but I don't see any way to manage or pass a policy or tax or inflate our way out of this. Do you, I mean, where do you see things going? Here, well, okay, so there is, okay, let's talk about the pure mathematics of it. And this is important because it's grade 11 math. That's my tagline, okay? It's that simple. Total global debt to global GDP. So basically I'm comparing your total global debt to your tax base, okay, is four to one, mm -hmm. which means if you put an average coupon in your numerator of 3% on that debt, so that includes all government debt, all corporate debt, structured debt, mm -hmm. all the debt, 3% is probably low, but let's make the math easy. Your numerator is growing at four times 3% is 12% relative to your denominator. Right. Is global GDP going to grow at 12% just to keep pace with the numerator? No. No. The, the debt actually suppresses the growth. It does, yeah. but it is just not going to. Global right. growth does not hit 12%. Right. Here is the out. What, what, there is no out, but just that is the de definition of the debt spiral right there. The numerator keeps growing even in the absence of the new deficits spending and the unfunded liabilities that are going to hit the balance sheets of the global central banks, mm -hmm. you're already at a point where you can't keep up with the organic growth of the debt because mm -hmm. that's all it is. It's a coupon. It is a contract. Here's an out. Inflation goes to 20% and somehow they keep bond yields at 2%. Mm -hmm. Basically, the, new, the denominator grows because that's 20% right. growth. Mm -hmm. And somehow bondholders are so silly that they continue funding the government at a negative 18% real yield. Is it going to happen? I don't know. But it is a mathematical out. Yeah. I don't, I, you can't say it's a zero probability that it'll happen. But if bondholders are really that foolish, yeah. Yeah, they shouldn't be managing money. Right. And then you're running the risk of just the currency system oh, collapsing. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. Look, I don't think, look, I'm, I, I, again, I play probabilities and there's no zero probability events yeah. or very few of them. Um, it's a tail risk that you, or a tail event that you should not focus on. Uh, I always say, look, uh, focusing on tail risks is like focusing on the whole of a donut rather than on the donut itself. Okay. You gotta, you gotta admit that it exists, but focus on the donut. Don't focus on the hole in the donut. <laughs> Can we talk about us default risk and other G seven sure, or G 20 nations? Call, For sure. Um, you know, this is unthinkable. I think to a lot of people, you talk about us dollar collapsing or, or, you know, even just, uh, an explicit debt default. A lot of people just have that recency bias of it could never happen here, wherever here is, right? We're in the U.S., so presumably we're in the best position, yes. which I think we are. Yes, you are. But um, the risk is not zero, and Bitcoin does change the calculus. So how do you see things playing out? Well, so out? yeah, let's, let's point out why it is not zero. There is actually a market called the credit default swap market that is an open, unmanipulated market for insurance on default. Mm. And there are people right now that are paying for a number 10 basis points a year. It's slightly higher than that, but 10 basis points a year is 0.1% for insurance against the default by the USA over five years. Mm. Okay. Given that there's a market for this insurance and it's not trading at zero, 
let's be very clear. There are people that are worried about the right. default of the USA. Now, to take that to an extreme, the default of Turkey, which is much more likely, the insurance premium is a lot higher. Uh, it's about 40 times as high because uh, it trades at about 400 basis points or 4% a mm. year on that insurance contract. But these are all open market rates that indicate concern by global investors over an eventual default of various counterparties. The USA, as I said, in my opinion, is the world's most uh, secure debtor, followed closely by the European Union. Canada's in big trouble. Even though we have a supposed higher credit rating, which is a subjective evaluation by the likes of S&P, uh, Standard & Poor's is a credit rating agency. The credit rating on Canada is AAA, which is the gilt edge, the highest rating that you can get, whereas the USA is AA+. Mm. But the default insurance market is saying that Canada is much worse shape. We have to pay about, you know, we people are paying 30 basis points a year or three mm. times as high uh, to insure Canadian government debt as they are to insure USA. So always look to open markets for truth. I would say S&P's credit rating on Canada is wrong. Uh, and I also believe that the management of Canada is a little suspect as well. When you have mm. a prime minister running around saying stuff like uh, the budget will balance itself, which is what Justin Trudeau said, uh, that's not the type of management you uh, get a lot of comfort in if you're a debtor or a, a lender to this country because uh, budgets don't balance themselves, Mr. Trudeau. Uh, that is an infantile uh, statement. And at the end of the day, if you were the CEO of a publicly traded company, you'd likely get fired on the spot for sa making such an asinine statement. So he said that, and then he also said, well, forgive me, I don't care about monetary policy. Both of those things uh, are a big red flag to, uh, to lenders, in my opinion. Yeah, he's definitely thrown up a lot of red flags in a lot of ways. So do you think we will see a G7 or G20 explicit default in the next few decades? Great question. I pray it's not the case, but Canada will be the first one. The first one. Yeah. And then you think U.S. is 10 years after that. I do. But here's the reality. Let's just go down the, the chart to G20s. Uh, Argentina is a G20. It's mm. defaulted four times. Right, right. Uh, Turkey is on its way. It's a G20. Yeah. Italy would be uh, a, a basket case uh, if it wasn't for the European Union or the ECB uh, backing Germany in specific. Yeah. Uh, so you have the weak sisters of the European Union. Uh, they were called the pigs. Uh, if you guys remember that acronym, Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, thank goodness they have the, uh, now some of them are G7 countries, but uh, well, Italy, I guess. But um, uh, you know, Italy, France, these are countries that if they didn't have European Central Bank backing would be uh, in Canada's, you know, quandary. Right. Gotcha. What does, so you look at Bitcoin as insurance on this? Yeah. And so what does that mean exactly? That if you were a creditor to certain countries historically that now you need to consider Think of what hedging Bitcoin that is, position in my Bitcoin? opinion, that's correct. And I've written a paper on this. And uh, uh, basically, since my background is credit, I came at the valuation of Bitcoin using the credit default swap market. But it's based on my belief that Bitcoin is the anti-fiat. And being anti-fiat means that it is an insurance policy on a basket of fiats failing. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty easy to calculate. And I did this uh, in a calculation. I can come up with the intrinsic value of Bitcoin as the only anti-fiat out there uh, based on credit default swap markets for various sovereign nations multiplied by their outstanding debt as well as their unfunded obligations. And let's run through a quick example, if, if I may. And, and you can edit this out if, if, if I'm geeking out too <laughs> right. much on you, okay? But think of this. The United States has $30 billion of funded debt, right? Uh -huh. And it has another $180 trillion. So I said $30 billion, I think it's $30 trillion, yeah. plus another $180 trillion of unfunded obligations, which is Medicare and Medicaid. So yeah. make the math easy. $200 trillion of outstanding uh, obligations, yeah. the U.S. government. And... 
there's a credit default swap market for the USA in the five-year term that trades, as I mentioned, between 10 and 15 basis points, depending on the, the, the uh, markets and volatility in the markets. But let's move that out and, and imply what is a 20-year default rate on the USA, meaning the five-year rates at, at uh, 10 to 15 basis points. I argue that it's easy to, to, to put a number uh, on a 20-year rate for the USA right around, you know, and again, I'm going to make the math easy. Let's say it's, uh, it's uh, 50 basis points, okay? So 50 basis points is half a percent, and you have $200 trillion of... Uh, uh, U.S. obligations out there. So just on the U.S. market, 50 basis points is one half of a percent on 200 trillion. So 1% would be $2, two trillion. trillion. So it's 1 trillion. And now we're at half a percent. That's 1 trillion. That's yeah. just on the United States. That's what Bitcoin should be worth just on the United States. Yeah. Well, isn't it interesting? It's Bitcoin's about at a about a trillion bucks. Yeah. That means you get default protection on the USA plus all the other nations in the world for mm. free. Are you supposed to buy it here <laughs> at 40,000 or 45,000? My advice to everybody out there using that math is you close your eyes and you buy it blindly <laughs> because you're getting insurance protection on the US for fair value mm -hmm. and you're getting everybody else in the world for free. Right. And by the way, everybody else in the world is far worse, worse than the USA.